Today's AAA heating and cooling poll question, you can, of course, visit them at AAAIAQ.com, a family business helping families for over 60 years. And this was spurred by a national football writer's tweet that I saw today, and it was pretty simple. He asked if we were talking enough about Oregon football this season. And being a national writer, this brings in all sorts of commentary and uh, and people from different areas, different fan bases, thinking Oregon's way too hyped, not enough, haven't heard anything. I think we're in a different bubble here because we talk Oregon football a lot. But the other thing that, that really interested me is that the ESPN football power index for the upcoming season is mm-hmm. now also out. They love Oregon. In fact, with their with their algorithm, they think o- Oregon is the second best team in the country. And we'll get into a few numbers as far as algorithmic projections that that it has as as to how good they think Oregon could be or what percentage chances they have to uh, achieve certain things during the season. But the poll question today is this: Are we talking enough about Oregon football's potential next season? Yes, we are. They're way overhyped. Yes, but it's warranted. No, they need more hype. Or no, they're not even good. Where would you guys land on this? Well, I think locally we're going to talk a lot about Oregon Ducks football because, I mean, it's the big game in town right now, right? Like you are on the cusp of being in the playoffs the last two years or at least in the conversation late into the year, right? Then this year... You get a huge transfer class that includes Evan Stewart, who's going to bolster your wide receiver room, and people are talking about him being even better than Tez Johnson, who Tez Johnson was, what, a top 60 player uh, coming into this season in the college football power rankings. Then at safety, you've got Kobe Savage, who's coming over from Kansas State. Absolute stud. you got Jabbar Muhammad, who was a lockdown corner last year for UW. So you take these positions where you already had good players or you were losing good players, all conference players, all American players from last year, and you're almost strengthening them. It feels like locally we're talking a lot about how great this team can be. When you look nationally, I don't believe that Oregon is going to get the same type of love because everyone is always going to beat on the drums of the blue bloods or the schools down South, whether that's the SEC schools specifically, you're going to be talking a lot about Alabama. What are they going to be able to do? Georgia, they feel like they're pissed off for greatness, like they want to reach heights that they haven't reached before. Or you're going to be talking about the ACC schools, specifically Clemson, where it's can they get back to what they were? Mm -hmm. It feels like they should be able to, yet Dabo Sweeney doesn't embrace the transfer portal. Aside from the military schools, Clemson is the only school that didn't take in a transfer. And then it's a dead gun mistake. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> shoot, even what was it? I have Saturday or Sunday, he has a TikTok where he has two five star recruits in the building. He doesn't know their name. I saw that. He made so cringe. He makes a Yikes. TikTok video where it'd be like if right now we're talking and I tried to go over and talk to Jordan and I went, Hey, um, hey, big guy. Talk like you, that time that Isaac tried to remember Joey's name while he was standing here in studio. He's a ten star now. You know, the, it's it's bad. So I feel like those schools are going to get more conversation than Oregon nationally, mm-hmm. and so that's why you kind of get the best of both worlds. Where locally we're talking about them a lot, and they probably deserve it, but nationally we're not talking about them enough. But so riddle me this, because I, I think that there's a kind of an interesting dar- dynamic when it when it comes to hype. I feel like there is a a large portion of sports fans that think we shouldn't hype a team or an athlete until they've proven it to us until they've until mm-hmm. they've done it until they've shown us that they can do it there are a, a whole there's a, i mean i think especially locally there are whole groups of people b fans uw fans saying what would we be hyping oregon for what have they won who, who, who have they beat and what has dan landing actually accomplished there there are legitimate questions to some of that, but on the flip side of it, you cannot deny that what they've done personnel-wise in the last two year, two years has put them leaps and bounds ahead of where they were and put them right up there with the national contenders. So does the substance have to happen before the hype is warranted, or can you hype a team knowing that this is probably coming down the pike? I think you can still hype this team. I mean, one, you, you people will go out and say that this Oregon team hasn't won a big game. Well, when you look at their three losses to UW, it's by a combined nine points. Yes, right, and, right, and we we know those were close. We but 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 people who are defenders of that will say, well, if you know if Oregon was was worth all that hype, they'd mm-hmm. find ways to win those games. Right, but then you can go down the list, and some of it is hindsight being twenty twenty. But 
You played number 19 Colorado, and you beat the brakes off of them last year. Mm -hmm. You played number 13 Utah. You beat the brakes off of them on the road. Mm -hmm. You played number 16 Oregon State. You beat the brakes off of them, right? And you go back down the list from last year, and you played in a bunch of big games, and you won big games as well. So for me, it feels like it's an inevitability. When you keep getting this level of talent mm-hmm. and you are right there and you're right on the cusp, but you seem to falter in big moments, but you barely falter, right? Like, yeah, you're on the cusp. You're right there. The conference title game, you dub they they whooped you. Yeah, they, they beat whooped you, you. It got close at the end because you were able to get a couple quick touchdowns. But when you look at the game that was on the road in Seattle, you convert on one of your three fourth downs. You win that football game. Mm -hmm. If your kicker makes a very makeable kick, you're in overtime in that football game. So it feels like it's an inevitability. And then you look at this big 10 schedule that Oregon has to play. Your toughest game is going to be against Ohio state. You get that at home. You're on the road against Michigan, but do we really know what Michigan is right now they're gonna be a good team they're gonna be a borderline playoff team mm-hmm. but we don't totally know how that's gonna change new coach now new they, personnel right and they lost a lot of that national championship yeah, including team. their quarterback their running back their head coach yeah right and then you're gonna get you dub and you're getting that game at home so when i go down and i look at this schedule maybe wisconsin scares you but it feels like a favorable schedule that's going to allow oregon to they should be in the playoff, but you might be talking about them as a team that should probably be getting a bye. I mean, if I look at it, and I'm trying to look at this objectively because, uh, you know, we've hosted programs together for Ducks football. You all know I'm a huge Ducks homer. However, it sounds like the national media is looking at their trajectory of the program as well as what they've got. I mean, when you replace talent with like an Evan Stewart and a Jabbar Muhammad coming in, four or five stars at huge positions. Two of the league, very best available in their position in the I, country. I mean, I don't understand how that doesn't automatically put you in the position along with the Dylan Gabriel and you've got more coming in as well. You're yeah. set up at quarterback for the next three seasons along with the things that you've had with Bo Nick's success in the last two seasons. It's through trajectory and they've gone to two national championships even before landing is here. So yes, they have not won a national championship. No, but they've been there. They've won Fiestas. They've won Rose Bowls. I feel like it's just people are sick of hearing about Oregon and all the old money argument. Guess what? We're here. Whether or not the money's the reason, Oregon is is a top tier program. I do think it's warranted because any other team with that record last 10 and a half, you know, like 12 years of success, I would say would be getting the same treatment. Yeah. And I, I think the things holding them back is that when they've been in the position to finally take it home, they weren't able to. And I think that at those points in time, they weren't equipped the right way to do that. And now I, I would say those Oregon teams were overachieving. Now, I think achieving, I don't know that, it, I mean, overachieving would be maybe winning a national championship, but mm-hmm. but I'm looking at some of these numbers based on the football power index, and I can get into more about where it all comes from, but they take offensive, defensive, and special teams efficiency ratings. They run them through 10,000 permutations to try to get these results and numbers. It has Oregon with a 76% chance of making the 12-team playoff this year. It has Oregon as... A 37.5% chance of winning their conference, the Big Ten, over Ohio State, who's only at 25%. Well, the big key right there, too, you have them at, what, 25%? Or that's what the ESPN Power Index had them at? ESPN Power Index has them at a 37% chance of winning the conference and a 76% chance of making the playoffs. It is 100% going to hinge on your quarterback. Yes. I like Dylan Gabriel. I like what he was able to accomplish at Oklahoma. I like your offensive coordinator and coach Stein and what he has been able to create. You saw it with Bo Nix last year. It was a completely different offense than what Dillingham was running. Dillingham liked to have more RPOs. He wanted to have options on every play. Stein wants to have his best athletes in space with the ball. If Dylan Gabriel can take that next step up the same way that Bo Nix did when he got to Oregon and specifically when he got into Coach Stein's offense and he can be as efficient as Bo, that's going to be the big thing. Can you be as efficient as Bo Nix was last year? The sky is the limit for this team. If Dylan Gabriel is the same player that he was at Oklahoma, you're going to have a good year. You are going to probably be a playoff team barring injuries or some fluky things going down late. But I don't know that you'll be a national championship team. So at the end of the day, it's all going to depend on 
what type of quarterback is Dylan Gabriel going to be? Is and can he, he and can he distribute that ball to his weapons? Because that's mm-hmm. what it sounds like is the is the key. One hundred percent. Because Jordan James is going to be better than last year. Yep. Tez Johnson can be better than last year. Evan Stewart can be better than last year. Trayshawn Holden can be better than last year. You have a lot of very talented skill players, and we didn't even get into your biggest mismatch, which is your tight end room with both Herbert and with Ferguson both coming back. You have matchup nightmares across the field. you got to have a quarterback that can get the ball to them. Right now, Dylan Gabriel has shown all the signs that he can do that, but he has to do it at an efficient level like Bo did.